Welcome to another episode of Talking Sunday Readings. I'm Father Chuck Carter, joined by Ann Carter and Pastor Richard Stadler. Today we are discussing the readings for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. We're going to look first at Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 10. And then we're going to take a look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. And then our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. We're going to change it up a little bit today and do a little uh, responsive reading of our first text from Isaiah 58, um, just as a way to uh, get some different voices and flesh out some of the nuances and the dynamics that are at work in this text. So, Pastor Stadler, if you'll get us started. Okay. Um, you'll hear my narration to start with, which is really the voice of God to start with, but then you'll hear God's response and Israel's response, and then God will come back. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel, and to fight, and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry, and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. So it's an interesting dialogue between God and, and the people of Israel. And it's also, a, I think, a very good lesson in the nature of authentic uh, relationship with God versus an inauthentic relationship with God and what God really desires um, and what a fast truly consists of. Um, and how easy it is for us to get caught up in the appearances of things rather than in the genuine spirit of Mm -hmm. of things. Um, And the interesting response that Israel has in verse 3, you know, why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Well, it's not really humility that you're showing. It's not really a fast that you're performing. It's more in service of your own... uh, sort of vain glory yep. that you're serving. The words that you read from God in verse 2 were kind of accusing them mm-hmm. pretty directly of hypocrisy, mm-hmm. um, that these are phony approaches that they're making. They're not coming the way God expects them to come, and that is repentantly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why the, the, the story ends, or the verse ends, with God now summoning them to repentance and saying, you want to come to me? I'll receive you. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good gospel at the tail end of this after he kind of indicts them in the first part yeah so the uh, and that first verse too that cry aloud do not hold back lift up your voice like a trumpet um declare to my people their transgression to the house of jacob their sins um there's a there's a sense in which um it, it needs to be made known you know the hypocrisy needs to be called out um and that uh, God is sort of authorizing this declaration to take place, um, and that there's no uh, there's no repentance without kind of a summons to repentance. Do you take this as a summons to the prophet to cry aloud? 
Uh, who's got to talk to that's, here? That's, a, I, uh, that's the assumption. That's I'm what sure. I thought. Yeah, that's, that's my assumption, that's, too. That, likewise. And yeah. so he's calling on his man. Mm -hmm. Speak up. Mm -hmm. Tell him what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. And um, speak for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he is speaking to the <clears throat> leadership only, if they have led the people astray, or if they all are just in it for the show. Yeah. And that that's a danger within any, is that yeah. the people in the congregation don't know unless they're taught by their pastor. It's a great responsibility that you have. It can mm -hmm. be a both and, mm -hmm. you know, that he's indicting both the people for going along mm -hmm. with the leaders because mm -hmm. people are supposed to hold their spiritual leaders responsible. Yeah, that's, to, that's, the, that's the crux is that people in the congregation are supposed to know when their leadership are going astray rather yeah. than floating along. Right. Yeah, they've got to have this discernment mm -hmm. in order to yeah. perceive when something's out of whack mm -hmm. and, and then do something about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. A reading from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But... As it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? so also no one comprehends what truly is God's, except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So okay, we then on. if we want to turn to the epistle lesson, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And last week we kind of had this set up when Paul says, When I came among you, I preached, decided to preach nothing but Christ and him crucified. And he comes to the same a message here in the yeah. beginning of chapter 2 where he says look I'm not going to try to use fancy rhetorical images or constructions I'm just going to preach about Jesus and how he died for you and uh, he makes an argument that the people of this world the leaders of the religious world would have recognized Jesus if they had tied into the wisdom of God but even as smart as they were and as wise as they were recognized to be by other people they missed it. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the Lord of glory who died for them, and they completely ignored that. Yeah. So I think there's a call for humility among us, mm -hmm. is that don't suffer from delusions of grandeur. 
when it comes to our wisdom. And um, I think there's a good reminder to both pastors and people in the pew to um, hear the Word of God, trust it, and don't get too carried away with your own fancy wisdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you might have the most articulate and brilliant sermon, uh, but oftentimes people will come away with, with just one thing, maybe even one word that will stick with them. It might not even be what you say. It might be, you know, what they heard in a hymn that day or something that, that affects a change within um, rather than, you know, something well prepared and, and thought out. Not to say we don't, we yeah, don't we do our do, do due diligence. Best, due diligence, yes. right. I'm just saying. That. But mm-hmm. there is a, a good reminder here because I remember in my very earliest years, when I was vickering for different congregations trying to do visits for them, I tried to argue people into the faith. And um, it took me a while to learn that what you need to do is tell them the story. Mm -hmm. Tell them what Jesus has done. Back off and let the Holy Spirit do what he's going to do. And that's what Paul gets to here in the last verse when he Mm -hmm. says, um, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of um, who is from God that we might understand. So if that's how we come to faith, mm-hmm. I think this is a good reminder to people who have loved ones who aren't Christian or have drifted away from Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to wait for a time when you can have the most startling uh, rhetorical argument for them. Um, just tell them the story along mm-hmm. the way and tell them what Jesus has done for you, why he means so much to you, and then back off and just let it percolate. Yeah, let mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit do what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think along with that, if you just live the life as well, mm-hmm. they can watch you yeah. and find out if indeed you're as big a hypocrite as they think the entire institutional church is, yeah. if you're as stupid as I think you are, or <laughs> if your life reflects honest trust yeah. and no delusions of grandeur, mm-hmm. as you said. Mm-hmm. Well, and they're going to see in all of us flaws. Mm-hmm. And if we simply admit our flaws to one another Mm -hmm. and believe that we can be forgiven and also give voice to that, that gives them some hope when they discover flaws in themselves and they look themselves in the mirror and realize they're just as imperfect as we are. And maybe there's also forgiveness waiting for them just as there is for us. And if we've given evidence of receiving that forgiveness in the midst of our flaws, it it's, it's just a quiet reminder to people that that's also there for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. just a, a good mm-hmm. reminder. Mm-hmm. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, until your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> then to the gospel. To the gospel. Um, we have we are two Sundays left of Epiphany, which is crazy that time goes by as fast as it does. And then we go into Lent. Um, And the next two Sundays, I found out, are both the Sermon on the Mount. So I thought that was interesting, and so then I thought to myself, I wonder why. And um, 
correct me when, when I astray, if I do, but Epiphany is the season when Christ is manifest to the world, his light shines. And the Sermon on the Mount, it seems to me, are can be instructions on how we can then let that light shine as well. Um, and he says so in here. He says, we are the, you are the light of the world, a city on a hill cannot be hid. So how do we do that? And I think these next two Sundays, you guys preaching on the Sermon on the Mount mm -hmm. can be a, um, not rules to follow, but perhaps guidelines that this is, this is, mm -hmm. um, this can be constructive because mm -hmm. because I'm charging you now I'm gone I'm charging you with sharing who I am. Well, and I think what's critical in this is the he uses the present tense. He doesn't say you should be the salt, you should be the light. Uh uh. This is uh, not a command. Mm -hmm. This, this is, is an identification. Mm -hmm. So if you are the salt, what does that mean? And you've both been to Israel mm -hmm. and you've seen the Dead Sea and you see the salt that's there. It's not pure like the iodized salt we get out of our salt shakers. It's mm -hmm. a combination of dirt and chemicals and salt. And so if you lose your saltiness, all you have left is the dirt. And if you have erosion and, and rainstorms, as it will, dissolve the salt away. And, and so he's saying, don't lose that thing that is your characteristic identity piece. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll lose your saltiness. Mm -hmm. what, what are you going to replace it with? Now the question is, what's that salt? Sure. Is that good works? Is that what he's talking about? If we lose our good works, then we're worthless? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think what he's talking about is repentant faith. And if we have repentant faith and other people see us living that faith mm -hmm. and confessing our sins and apologizing when we need to apologize, confident that we can be forgiven, that gives them great hope. And same thing with light. I mean, that's a way of being the light, you know, letting people mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. I was struck by, uh, if Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount around the Sea of Galilee, and as you said, we were there, it's not as big as I anticipated. You can mm -hmm. see from side to side, um, east to west, almost north to south, that um, there are two, Jesus uses things that are familiar with his people um, to make his, <clears throat> excuse me, to make his examples um, at home. Um, Magdala, the city that we were, is also called Terakia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, which literally means the place of processing fish. Magdala, that area was where they brought all the fish to be salted. So if you say you're the salt of the earth, people knew right away what he was talking about. It's a preservative. It is, it is life. It is the future health of everybody. And the light of the world, a city built on a hill cannot be hid. The city of Hippos is right there on the Sea of Galilee. That's up on this hill, a Roman city, big Roman city, that, was, that also had baths, had temples. It was well populated. Mm -hmm. There were lots of things going on. There were always lights. And from all around this, the Sea of Galilee, you could see this city. It's not the kind of city that Jesus wants us to emulate, mm -hmm. but you would still have a visual in your head of the dark nights in Israel and then that city. What are we supposed to be and what can it be? Mm -hmm. Light to, to lighten the darkness mm -hmm. and, and, and hope of, and says, of hospitality yeah. and warmth and food and friendship. And he says that's what you are just by being believers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, I don't have to try to be a light in the world. Mm -hmm. If I'm just authentically a repentant Christian, mm -hmm. then people are going to see that. Mm -hmm. And I, unless mm -hmm. I hide it. Sure. Yes. And, 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 and the city could turn off all its lights yes. like they did during World War II mm -hmm. when they had the blackouts mm -hmm. to keep bombers from finding their cities. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's why the reference to the candle in the house is so um intriguing because he says uh, you don't take a candle and put it under a bushel you put it on a lampstand so that everybody in the house can see and that's one candle mm -hmm. that's so different from our houses but the houses in ancient Israel we found archaeologically are very simple one room yeah. mm -hmm. maybe four but they still could see the light of one candle it, it would provide light mm -hmm. into all those spaces and so incidentally we learned or are reinforced in something about how simple life was then. Sure. Yeah. And this game can, can be true about our life, yeah. is that mm -hmm. 
It can show up in our homes. Mm -hmm. It can show up in our families. Mm -hmm. It can show up when we're out on the city and the hill mm -hmm. to the whole world. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of applications for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't have to be a fancy light no. full of rhetoric or whatever. It just yeah. has mm -hmm. to be a light. Yeah, it doesn't have to, to be a spotlight going no. up like mm -hmm. a, a yeah. casinos. No, yeah. it, can just, mm -hmm. it can just be our light yes, that yeah. comes out of us. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. so. Mm -hmm. so some very good readings uh, for this uh, fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, we thank you for joining us. As always, uh, leave a like and subscribe. And thank you to Tim Carter behind the camera for directing and editing and filming. We'll see you again next week for the next episode of Talking Sunday Readings.